Welcome to the installation video series of Hoi Miles AC Coupled Inverter and DTS. This series of videos consists of five chapters, preparation, overview, inverter mounting, electrical wiring, and DTS network configuration. You can refer to the user manual if you need more information. Please note that only those who have been properly trained and demonstrate relevant skills can install and maintain this AC coupled inverter under instructions. Now, let's take a look at the tools that we are going to use. Installation tools we will use are electric drill, wire stripper, OT terminal crimper, hydraulic crimper, tubular termian crimping tool, heavy duty contour crimping tool, network cable crimper, and small Phillips screwdriver. Personal protective equipment includes helmet, gloves, and protective suit. Other materials include 4 square millimeters grounding cable, 2.5 to 4 square millimeters DC cable, 6 square millimeters DC cable, 4 to 6 square millimeters AC cable, 4 square millimeters AC cable, RS485 communication cable, Ethernet cable, RJ45 plug, then check if any items from the package are missing. There should be a mounting bracket, a communication box, a double row plug, a quick installation guide, two battery connectors, a grid connector, a generator connector, an EPS connector, 4M6 expansion screws and sleeves, a ground terminal, an M4 set screw, 6M3 set screws, 12 communication terminals, 15 AC terminals, a smart meter with three CTs, and a DTS, and RJ45 couple lock. Before we start, let's take a look at the ports on the AC coupled inverter so that you can better understand the installation process. From left to right, there are two battery terminals, DTS area, communication area, grid connector, generator connector, EPS connector, and PE terminal. Now, we are ready to go. Please choose the appropriate installation location according to local regulations and actual installation conditions. To clearly demonstrate the process, we will mount the inverter on a wall. Please make sure that the AC coupled inverter is installed vertically or is tilted no more than 15 degrees. Leave enough space around the inverter. First, Mark the four drilling spots according to the screw holes on the bracket. Drill holes with an electric drill with a drilling depth no less than 60 millimeters. Then plug and secure the anchors in the holes. Fix the bracket with M6 screws. Please make sure that the bracket is firmly secured to the mounting surface. Next, mount the inverter on the bracket carefully. Now, we can move on to electrical wiring. Section 1. Grounding. First, prepare a ground wire as needed and then strip the insulation layer of the wire to a length that is 2 to 3 millimeters longer than the barrel of the terminal. Then insert the wire into the terminal and crimp it tightly with the ground terminal crimper. Then fix the cable to the PE port with them for screws. Connect the other end of the grounding wire to a nearby earthing point. Now, start the AC wire. The AC side includes grid connection, generator connection, and EPS connection. Step 1. Generator connection. In this step, we'll be using the generator connector which is composed of a waterproof connector and an AC connector. First, strip the 4 square millimeters AC cable and the wire strands in it to an appropriate length. Then insert the wire strands into the AC terminals and use the ferrule crimper to crimp them tight. Next, turn the waterproof connector to disassemble the parts in order and put the parts through the AC cable in the correct order. 
loosen the AC connector and fix all cables to the corresponding terminals according to the markings on the AC connector with a torque of 1.2 Newton meter. Make sure that all L or N or PAY lines are connected correctly. Assemble the parts in sequence. Finally, insert the generator connectors into the generator port on the inverter until you hear a click sound. Repeat the same process to prepare the grid cables and connect the grid connectors to the inverter. Now, let's do the EPS wiring. First, strip the insulation of the 4 to 6 square millimeters AC cable to a suitable length. Then insert the cable conductor core into the AC terminal and crimp it tight with the ferro crimper. Then, unscrew the EPS connector counterclockwise and disassemble the parts in order. Put the AC cable through the connector parts in sequence. Loosen the EPS connector with the screwdriver and fix all cables to the corresponding terminals according to markings on the AC connector with a torque of 1.2 Newton meter. Please make sure that all L or N or PE are connected correctly. Assemble the parts in sequence. Finally, connect the EPS connectors to the inverter until you hear a click sound. Next, let's start the battery wiring connection. Take out the battery connectors and crimp contacts. They are also used in pairs. Unscrew the battery connector counterclockwise to remove the insulator and the inner cable gland. Strip the insulation from each 6 square millimeters DC cable by 7 to 8 millimeters, and then use the hydraulic crimper to crimp it tightly. Next, insert the cable into the connector parts in sequence. Gently pull the cable backward to ensure the connection is secure. Then tighten the cable gland. Perform the same process on the positive battery connector. Remove the dust cover and insert the battery connectors until you hear a click. Make sure that the polarity of all connected cables is correct. Now, let's do the communication wiring. Peel the stickers off from the communication port and we can see seven ports. DI and DRM port, meter port, BMS port, two parallel ports and two DO ports. First, unscrew the communication box and disassemble the parts in order. Please note that the rubber ring in the communication box has dust plugs, and there are opening lines on the side of each hole. We should first insert the cable into the cap nut, then remove the dust plug. Press the cable from the opening line in the rubber ring. and tighten the communication box to complete the installation. Now, we can move on to the BMS preparation. Strip the insulation layer of the network cable with a network cable stripper, and lead the corresponding signal cables out. Insert the stripped network cable into the RJ45 plug in the correct order, and crimp it with the network cable crimper. Prepare the meter wiring cables in the same way. Use a wire stripper to separate the 485A and 485B wires from the other wires at the other end of the meter cable. Then, insert the wires into the communication terminals of the corresponding accessory. Next, use the ferro crimper to crimp the wires tight. Plug two meter communication cables into the left ports of RJ coupler separately and then plug the third communication cable into the right port of RJ coupler. For AC coupled system, two smart meters are required for the installation. The smart meter 1 is connected to the grid port, and the smart meter 2 is connected to the generator port. Before connecting meter 1 to the energy storage inverter, we need to install the meter inside the power distribution box. Now, we need to determine the connection between the meter and the power distribution box, that is, the voltage sampling line. The picture shows that ports 3, 6, 9 and 10 on the meter are the voltage sampling ports, which correspond to the L1, L2, 
L3 and N lines of the main air switch, respectively. Connect the well-prepared wires to the meter. Next, let's install the current transformer. Before installing, we need to determine the mounting location of the CT. As shown by the signs, connect the white wire of the CT to port 13, 16, 19 of the meter and the blue wire to port 14, 17, 21 of the meter. Follow this path to connect the secondary winding of the CT to the meter. Then, attach the CT to the L-line to complete the current sampling. Before connection, we need to determine the position of the L-line first, and then check whether the arrow direction is the same as the current flow direction. Please check if the CT mounting location is correct. Connect the communication cable to the corresponding port on the meter. Similar to the installation of meter 1, connect the well-prepared wires to the meter. Next, let's install the current transformer. Connect the white wire of the CT to port 13, 16, 19 of the meter, and the blue wire to port 14, 17, 21 of the meter. Then, attach the CT to the L-line of the generator port to complete the current sampling. The arrow direction points to the generator. Finally, connect the communication cable to the corresponding port on the meter. Next, we can start the DRM preparation. Take out an RS-485 cable of a suitable length and strip it to a suitable length. Insert the cable into the communication terminal which is included in the accessories and use a ferrule crimper to tighten it. Next, take out the double row plug from the accessory package. According to the function of each port, we know that the ports for DRM are 7 and 8. Insert the cable firmly into the port and pull the wires outward to check whether they are firmly installed. Now, all the cables in the communication box are ready. Thread the cables through the communication box. Then push the Ethernet cable into the rubber ring. Insert them into the communication port of the inverter in order. Fix the communication box with 4M3 screws. Then tighten the cable gland to complete the communication wiring connection. Then, connect the other end of the BMS cable to the battery as instructed in the battery's manual instructions. Now, we come to the last part, the connection of DTS. Remove the DTS port cover with a screwdriver. Then insert the DTS into the USB port and use the screws that were just removed to fix the DTS. Connect the AC input of the inverter to the local grid to complete the installation of the AC coupled inverter. Wait for the fur green indicators and the surrounding blue circles to light on. Please note that the length of the surrounding blue lights indicates the amount of energy stored in the battery. You can refer to the user manual to learn more about the status of the lights. Once the first communication indicator light of the DTS is on, it means that the DTS is ready for network configuration. Open the installer app on your smartphone or tablet and log in. Then click on O and M at the bottom of the page and tap on Network Configuration. Then click Confirm to enter the mobile wireless network connection and turn the Wi-Fi on. Select the DTS wireless network and click Connect. When the connection is successful, tap on Network Configuration again and enter the Network Configuration page. Select your router Wi-Fi and enter your password. Then click on Send to DTU. Tap on Finish to complete the configuration. If you see three solid blue lights on the DTS, it means that the DTS connection is successful. You can also turn on the inverter self-test function on your mobile app to check for potential faults and troubleshooting suggestions. Thanks for your watching.